most, you know, well, where I got into the most trouble, you know. I had to go back and face, face the music. In my head at the time, I thought I was going to jail anyway, so. You know, easily I could have thought, like, oh, I'm going to jail, yeah, I can just. So what's the point? You know what I mean? Like, most people are like, yeah, let's, let's go back, let's go and do that. But I thought, no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not replaying that. It's up and down, it always ends up the same. It always ends up the same way. It always ends up with nothing. In here, you know, I was in an empty man. Empty. So I've gone back to the place that ruined me, Hull City, and I never actually stepped into Springbank last year. And, you know, I, so at this time, I didn't have anything. I had gone to live with my, my cousin Lauren. She was a reaver, um, and she knew, you know, she knew some bits. So I lived with her, she said I could stay on the couch, she stayed on the couch, I love you Lauren, you know. And, you know, she teach me how fatty I and it's like learning how to pray namaz. I gone to the Springbank Masjid um, with Imam Abid Salik, he's a very beautiful man, very good man, he's, he's helped me out a lot. He's helped me out so much. He's helped me out so much. He taught me everything. I went in there, you know, and he used to teach me the basics, the fundamentals. He taught me al Fatiha as well. And al class. he taught me, like, the uh, Thanna. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika wa tabaraka smukka wa ta'ala jaluka. Wallahi Allah hayru. I think that's how it was. The um, the word at the beginning of prayer. I don't always say it, but it's funny. So like I was in two minds as well. Like I was always had reservations. Like people say, is it an option? Like it's always an option. It's the shaitan at this time, and I was struggling to keep on the dean. So that's why I went to Hull City. I wanted to go to Umrah. I said like I can never go back. That's why I never. I can never go back. Like I thought about it, but I can never go back. Um, of which of those favors of your Lord will you deny? I needed. I knew I needed to go to Umrah. So um, you know, I went to seek more knowledge in Hull City for the first time. Actually, like buckle down and be a good Muslim and learning knowledge. I didn't want to be just one of the reverts who didn't know much about Islam and barely knew. Didn't know how to pray really. You, know, you get you, you get in the rewards that you the, the effort that you put in. You know, you got to put the effort in. So I'm really trying now. So like, you know, it was either I was gonna go back or go to Umrah, and like, I, I was well, like, I was scared, man. Do you know what I mean? I was like Saudi Arabia. I, I didn't know. I'm not. I'm not born Muslim. Didn't know anything about Saudi Arabia. Like other people there, I don't know how it is. So my my friend Anas, he's like always ringing me from Mecca. He works there as a tour guide. He used to make dua for me. He used to perform Umrah for me. Show me the Kaaba and told me to watch the Omar series, um, it's a Saudi series, the Omar series about this Salaf series, you know, true to the Quran and the Hadith. And, you know, I learned about the companions. And I, so when I started watching this Omar series, I learned about the, uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam through the companions like never before. Really, really, really fell in love with them as role models. So the key for me was not just learning how to pray, but for me was learning about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The more I fell in love with him, the more love I got from Allah Azawajal. And the more I learned about the companions, the more I loved them, and the more I loved the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Peace be upon him, I mean, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Peace and blessings upon the Prophet. I, 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 I really, like, I thought I was a Muslim. I did my shahada, but I felt like I was a Muslim again. You know, like, I really didn't know anything about Islam. You know, and I was really disappointed. And I thought, Mela, forgive me. Mela, forgive me. I, I've been missing out on this sweetness, man. Alhamdulillah. The Ajah and Barakah. You know, you can't. People say, people say to me, Islam is easy. And, you know, being a Muslim, Islam is easy, but being a good Muslim is hard. So, like, yeah, so I got my passport finally. So, before I never had a passport, I never left the country, never had a bank account or anything. And like, um, yeah, I went to Saudi Arabia, Abid Imam, uh, Imam Abid Salik, he would teach me, and me and Yusuf, we were at Yusuf, my brother, we went there together. So Alhamdulillah, when I went to Saudi, 
I'd go to all these places, you know, we started from Medina, and Masjid Koba, Masjid Kiblatin, all these places that I read about in the Hadith and MashaAllah, and I watched the stories on the Omar series. You know, when it was really emotional, really powerful, because I felt like Allah gave me a second chance, and it was a reward, and so I became like in a mindset, I had a mindset like never before, I was a Muslim, and yeah, I was happy anyway, Yanni, but now, it's next level, man. I was, I got this this feeling. I can't describe it. And I, I had so much love for Islam more than before. Like, I respected the Muslims anyway, and I respected Islam. And Alhamdulillah, mean, but it, like really, really level started increasing and changing. My love for the Muslim, my love for the religion it was growing and increasing and increasing. I went to Medina, and I remember just. I remember getting the Ihram. We did our intentions in Medina at this masjid out of the border. And I remember just doing it and Anna was teaching me the du'a, how to, you know, make umrah and teaching me La Baik Allahumma La Baik La Baik Ta'ala Sharifka Lak Inna Alhamta Wan Ya Mata Laka Wal Mulk La Sharifka Lak You know, and it's such an amazing journey, like just that car journey, going to Umrah and the Hijra in reverse from Medina to Mecca. All the pit stops and wearing the Ihram, it was truly, truly abnormal for me and unreal. Masjid al Nabawi, when I first went to Masjid al Nabawi, I never felt so much peace in my life. Never peace. I was in the grave of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I say salam to him. Thank you for everything that you've done. May Allah bless you. May Allah Azawajal bless you, thank you for giving for Alhamdulillah Bilal Ameen for Allah Azawajal for making you a prophet and giving us the revelation of the Holy Quran. It's truly amazing and you know I remember looking at this moment, I really needed it and if any lads you know like you're struggling man go to Umrah bro you change your life man and when you come back you get a bit of depression but you'll be alright man you'll be alright Allah's with you. So like when I went to Mashal Nabwi for the first time, like, well, like, I felt like crying even in the Mashal Nabwi. I was just so happy. I was so happy. I felt brand new, reborn again. But, well, like, I felt so much solace. It's a paradise uh, on, on, on earth for the Muslims. It's a peaceful place, you know. You know, back in the day, the Prophet received a lot of um, hardships. We all received them, but he especially trials and tribulations. And, you know, Mecca, Medina was a safe haven for the Muslims and it still is to this day. It's such a beautiful, beautiful structure, such a beautiful building. Wallahi, so much baraka, so much, so much baraka, so many angels, so many angels. There's nothing like it. Fajr, Fajr. When I first went in there, it was the first masjid I went to with like, like an imam, dual imams and like, it was just different from the one in the UK, and I'd never been to somewhere like that. So many people from all around the world, you know, it was so busy. All the people, you know. I remember when I first went into the Mashal Nabwi, the guards tried not to let me in. You know, when one of the Saudi lads, Saudi officials, he came over and he's like, Ibrahim, I know you from TikTok. And he helped me get in and give me a tour around, you know, all the masjid, like, bypassed everything. Allahumma barik. I spent a lot of time in Mashal Nabwi. Preparing for Umrah. I've gone to Umrah. We've gone in the hotel. It's the first time I've gone there. I remember before the hotel, we seen the clock tower and I was so excited. Like, well, I was so excited. I read about it, learned about it. It was all fresh to me. It's the most beautiful thing that I've ever seen in my life, the Mecca. And we've gone in the hotels and I was very scared, very nervous to perform Umrah. It's my first time. I had my Ihram on and Anas, you know. I remember we, we did, we, alhamdulillah, we got into um, uh, Masjid al-Haram. I see the Kaaba for the first time. My, wallahi, my heart started to cry, you know, and I stood there for ages just making du'a, just, just alhamdulillah, 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 Just the thing, like, you know, like I, I used to like pray to, for somebody to help me, and I'd come here, and I thought, I'm so blessed. I'm so, so blessed out of everyone in the world. Why me? Why choose me? 
I don't deserve it. I'm a scumbag. I'll try my best to be a good Muslim for myself, for you. You don't, you do not need me, but I need you. And I, I will lie. I have a feeling in my heart. It's indescribable. And I remember when we first started circling the Kaaba, and it was all new to me. Like Anas would say duas for me. I'd say them in English. He'd get me to repeat it after him. And I was in the black stone in the corner, and I'd only read about some books. I wasn't really on Instagram at the time. Even though I was on TikTok, I didn't really spend much time on it. So it was the first time really I seen this black stone, and he was like, do you want to kiss it? I said, inshallah, 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 if, if Allah wills it, inshallah. And then uh, me and Yusuf, it was a team uh, effort, like, so me and Yusuf was like trying to get to the stone, sober, with sober, with sober. And I'm gonna, I got there. With everyone's help, he was pushing me, grabbing me towards the stone, they wanted me to kiss it, I'm home about it. I kissed it, I lost Yusuf. We came out, me and Anas just had to perform Umrah on our own because we lost Yusuf. We found him actually before we go to the two mountains. We found, we waited for him. He made it, he made it, Alhamdulillah. I said, look bro, it's so busy there, like guys, there's thousands, tens of thousands of people going around the camera at once. Like we lost him in, we lost him in Umrah. And mashallah, when I kissed it, I, Alhamdulillah, Allah's Wajal gave me strength. And it was a mighty task, it was a mighty task. It was a mighty task. A lot of people they don't have sober and you know I feel sorry for the sisters as well because the brothers don't really give anyone a chance and there's people who's like getting crushed and climbing over people's heads on that there. Never said anything quite like this. Not even in real rumble in WWE, you know, WWF when you was a kid. Like, this is next level man. They're not fighting but you know, they're like pushing each other about and picking each other up and like yeah, like, ah, ah. It's like a tug of war. It's like a tug of war, it's exactly what it is now. People can say, yeah, billah. it shouldn't be like this. It shouldn't be like this. How can you regulate this though when there's so many people there? It's impossible. They try. There's many security guards there. There's a guy with a gun on top of the stone. You know, if anything happens, there can be people with no sober. There's a guy there with a gun. And then um, we meet Yusuf and Alhamdulillah, we're going between the lights, you know, between the mountains, you know. That first Umrah, it's incomparable. I've been many times now, but when I went to Mecca, it was a place. It's all people, all religions, all skin colours, and all love for the brothers. It doesn't matter who you are, where you're from. This is a place where, Alhamdulillah, it's a cure for everything, all problems, racism. And I knew that Islam was the truth when I went there. These people are here for pilgrimage. These people are here for Umrah. They're here for Allah's wajal. Not like the Pope, and then, you know, they're there for the, not like the Vatican, they're there for the Pope, you know. Alhamdulillah, it's more of a uh, democracy, man. I don't know what that is. But here, there's like the imams, or there's no popes or anything. It's just Allah. And, you know, there's imams, like, who lead Salah, but again, they're just brothers. You know, they're of no importance. May Allah bless them and reward them. They're of no importance beyond any other Muslim. That's what I mean. Or the sheikhs, all these muftis, you know. May Allah bless them for seeking knowledge, but they're just brothers. In fact, we shouldn't even call them sheikhs or muftis. Or, you know, ustads, yeah, because it's someone of knowledge, but sheikh, we shouldn't really say this. You know, I don't know, people start worshipping the sheikhs, like, it's kind of bad, man. I'd just be called Ibrahim, you know, if I was ever. Yeah, true. Anyway, mashallah, may Allah's majal accept the umrah. We finished the umrah, and, you know, I'll probably put a little video in this. Uh, my first number and my first when I perform my intentions and stuff and we were going to get my hair cut you know in Umrah shaving the head man and you know when just the, the clock tower we to the clock tower and the vibes like everyone loves each other like in, in Islam the Muslims are not perfect so, like even if you're going to foreign countries but you know when, in, when you're in Mecca like all that goes out the window and stuff like when I was in Egypt, like they've all got like egos and stuff like that. Like they're from like France and that. Like the French, the French man, a lot of the French brothers, man. You know, like and they got kind like they got big egos, man. It's like, bro, you shouldn't look die, brother. And, you know, may all those which make us all sincere. But in uh, Umrah, Alhamdulillah, it was amazing. I went there again for my first Ramadan. Oh wow, so I went back to Mashal Nabawi and it was times 10, there were so many people there, like there was, I think there was like 
half a million people there that day. And I kept performing Tawaf and Umrah and Umrah. I'd gone back, I'd gone back home before, learning more about Islam. It's got me stronger on the deen. I decided I wanted to leave the UK. I don't want to live here anymore. I don't want to support it. And you know, the brothers, mashallah, are amazing in the UK. I miss them. I miss them and I always pray for them. It's not a place for me. Uh, we've had different lives and you know, I'm done. I'll come back to visit friends. So I start making, learning more do learning about the Prophet Muhammad I start learning about the biography, the reading the sweet nectar when the moon split, you know, I'm watching programs of the programs I'm, and I want to learn knowledge. Because the more knowledge we get, the more closer we get to Allah, the more we know about the Prophet Muhammad the more love we receive from Allah. So I've gone back for Ramadan, there's loads of people, there's bad people, so many people here in the month of Ramadan. It's now Ramadan now, Ramadan Mubarak, Ramadan Kareem. And, um, oh my, do you know what? It was so busy. Like, Yanni, it was so busy in Ramadan. This is why I've not gone back this year. The Ajr, so when you perform Umrah in Ramadan, it's as if you, it is as if you have performed Hajj with the Prophet. This is the reward. That's it. Ajr, the same. More Barakah, inshallah, in Ramadan, surely. It doesn't matter where you are for that. So uh, I didn't go this year because it's too busy, man. I, I, I want to go to Hajj. So when I went there, it was so busy, man. And, you know, it made me a bit uncomfortable. Like, Alhamdulillah, I couldn't even walk. The omelette took, like, times ten time because it was so busy that I didn't feel uncomfortable. I mean, again, everyone was getting stressy with fasting. And there's a lot of stress. Um, Makkah is known for it. Uh, it's hectic. It's a hectic place. It always was, even when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was alive. That's why he went to the Jabal Al not Jabal Al Nur, Mount Hira, the mountain of light. He would go there to escape this. And when I went to um, when we was there in Ramadan, we'd always go up Jabal Al Nur at the top. We'll talk about that in a minute. So like, so basically, yeah. Uh, when I was there, I kind of when I was in Umrah, I kind of thought like, I was outside the clock tower. Like this is how it must have been. Without all the sins, like how how hectic it describes uh, Mecca to be, I can only imagine. You know, it's such a small place. Mecca is such a small place, really. It is small. It's very small. It's tiny. It's tiny. You can drive around it within about an hour. The whole thing, no, about two hours. The whole thing. And the Umrah, Alhamdulillah, I kept performing Tawaf. We we were we found certain days yet yeah, to uh, go perform Tawaf. Like when it was less busy, it was still mental. Every time I go kiss the stone, Alhamdulillah, Hidlam Amin. Every time I've, I've kissed it, you know, and this time when I was in Umrah uh, Ramadan, I actually prayed in the Kaaba. They opened the doors at 9.30 p.m. in Saudi Arabia, guys. So if you want to do that, you know, 9.30 p.m., they'll open the side door and everyone can pray in the Kaaba. The old existing Kaaba. It's been knocked down now. It's like a little wall. It's the Kaaba, it's the box. It's been knocked down a few times and rebuilt. But it, it represents the pilgrimage. It doesn't matter how many walls they knock down and build. It, it's a sunnah. And it's a pilgrimage for Allah's wajah. They can, they can knock it down ten times. It doesn't matter. Like, that's not the, the original uh, box. But it, it's, it's the it's the kibla. It's the direction of prayer. And that's what matters. It's the direction of prayer. It's the, the old people's prayer and du'a. They go to this point and go up like a beam of light. You know, you know, theoretically or whatever, I'm not a smart guy, but you know, this is the place with the Adja. This is the place where all the prayers the directed to and called. All those of Jal calls us to this point. It's a very, very amazing, amazing, amazing. It's very an amazing uh, pilgrimage. And it heals the heart. Islam heals the heart. It makes you a better person. It heals the heart. I was so lost and miserable before, when I, and even sometimes times get bad when I'm a Muslim. I go to Umrah. I need it now. It's, too, it's a bit busy right now. You know, I've been there once last year for Ramadan. I I prefer a sabr, and I actually genuinely think like so. Even when I go to Umrah, not many people have sabr either. Like the aunties, the sisters, they'll bang you out of the way. The you know the men they'll push each other past the stone, but most half of them. Uh, they have sabr I don't know you've got to agree with me guys it's, you know we have sabr but there's a lot of people who don't you know um, 
in Ramadan, in Ramadan, in Ramadan. And even in not in Ramadan, it can happen, but I mean, Ramadan. And we're fasting as well, so. Anyway, so we go, we'd always go up to Jabal al-Nur. So when I go up to Jabal al-Nur, wallahi, that's another one. So I, like, I love to go to the Kaaba, uh, perform Umrah, Tawaf. But one of my favourite things is just going up Jabal al-Nur and just peaceful. And in Ramadan, there's loads of people up there going in the cave, praying in the cave where the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where had the Quran revealed to him by Angel Jibreel, Angel Gabriel. But I always meet my friends up there and stuff like I met someone I knew from Preston once up there and I thought, what are you doing here? Alhamdulillah, what I mean. Or I meet lads from Manny and Preston. I always meet my, the best of friends, brothers that I meet, right, are always at top of Jebel and Lord. That hike, it's amazing. Wallahi, it's amazing. You, you need to do it. We do it many times when we go there. It's, and up there, subhanAllah, it's the most beautiful view. Wallahi, it's the most beautiful view. And, you know, when you really, it really gets me thinking, like, when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to go up there, and I see the chaos, the chaos and the hecticness down there. Why go up there? He used to meditate to Allah Azawajal. Before Salah, the, before Quran and Salah, he uh, preached tau, Tawheed, you know, the oneness of God, Allah. He go there to meditate, you know, and talk. And then the Prophet, uh, was, he would receive prophecy and the Quran was revealed to him. And it's, alhamdulillah, we look at Islam now and how many people we have, we have blessed. There's a hadith that says, like, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says to the companions, I'm so proud of a certain, a certain group of people. The companions say, who? Us? He says, no. He's like, you have me guiding you, so I am proud of you, but it's not you. Uh, the angels? No, they're perfect. They're perfect, but they're created by Allah subhanahu wa They're made to be perfect. And they say, well, who is it? They say there's a group of people, not in this time right now, after me. Their man is so high, and they've not even had me in their lifetime or around me. And they believe in me, and they believe in uh, the revelation of the Quran. And they believe me to be a prophet. And, you know, he says that their man is, not mashallah, so high. And that's me, and that's you. You know, so we're not living in the time of the Prophet and, you know, so many people who have love for him and the Quran and Islam. It's very amazing. And I go up there and I think about how life would be. You know, I love him, Allah. He's been through so many trials. He's been tested since the birth, since, tested since the birth, Allah. By his family, Abu Lahab, you know, he's been lied to, he's been beat. People try to torture him, beat him, throw stones, throw phones at him. What it must have been like. Like, for me as a revert, how passionate I, I get, like, with my mum, I get to sit down for hours, like, mum, please, 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 I'm going to say crying to her, please, listen to me. I know what I realise is, as I in the Quran, it says, uh, I, I can't remember what it says, but it says something like, that it's not up to us to revert people, the only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he guides whom he will. So, inshallah, may Allah guide, may Allah guide them. Guide them. It doesn't mean we shouldn't stop trying, but it just made me realise, no matter how passionate I get, it's not upon me to revert people. That's why I don't do many, um, anyway. And I used to think like how, in the first beginning days with Khadija and the Prophet, the Prophet Muhammad told Khadija, she believed him, she was the first to revert to Islam. She has a palace in Jannah, Alhamdulillah, the most blessed of the women and how hard it must have been you know like how passionate and you know we want he loved the human he even though the Quraysh and the people you know they was bad to him he still still has so much love and he still said Alhamdulillah Bilal Amin for everything and how much passion that he had to spread the deen Wallahi it's a it's a role model the perfect role model the best of examples I always get flashbacks in that first moment or like I try to imagine when he got the Quran revealed to him and like when he re received the prophecy and like how he must have felt like he said it's a Hasrat Khadija he says like uh, he says uh, who will believe me now Khadija who will believe me now and you know it gives me shivers when I hear that and look at look at we look at the Kaaba now, Wallahi, Alhamdulillah, I know he would be so happy, so, so happy. And, you know, even him at the time wouldn't have known this would have happened. Islam has spread worldwide. 
you know, when in his lifetime, I, I wish that he would have been able to see this. But inshallah, khair, we all, I'm sure we will tell him, that, inshallah, the pool of abundance will go for. I'm sure, we'll all talk, talk about this with him, inshallah, one day. Anyway. It was Ramadan and I think uh, I've always gone up Jabal al Noor. Jabal al Thor is a place, I think it was him and Abu Bakr, they went to escape, right, from the Quraysh. I don't know if it was Khalid or Al uh, Yani, I forget, I forget. And there's like this spider web that hides them in the cave. So I climbed up there, I climbed up there, it was Ramadan. Oh, wallah, I shouldn't have done that. I almost died up there because I was fasting and I thought, oh, it's like Jabal al Noor, I can do this without water. But no, it's took like three times time to trek up there. Jabal Noor is an easy trek, man. It's an easy trek. Not for the olders, like may Allah bless you all, but I mean, Jabal Noor is a different kettle of fish, man. Oh, man. But when I went up there, I remember all these the Yemenis were going, MashaAllah, Salaam Alaikum, Barakallah Fee, Barakallah Fee. And I was just greeted by like so much love and we had Iftar there. I went in the cave and you know, um, I just let down where I fought to believe the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam slept as well and I just thought, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, you know, these people are my heroes, Alhamdulillah, and just following in their footsteps, even walking up the same mountains, it's something amazing in it to me, and I get like a better, I get a better view of the stories as well, like I feel like I'm I'm walking up there and I'm, I'm imagining the story as it's happening. You know, I'm walking up. It's very, it's very special. And, and I've gone so many places, Jabal Thor, Jabal Noor. Even the place like where, you know, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he made dua for, it was Khandak, Khandak, Masjid Khandak, or the seven Masjids, about the Battle of Khandak. I go there, I even go to the place where he put on his armor before the Battle of Khandak, before the Battle of Ahud. I go to the cave at the back of the map, uh, Jabal Ahud, uh, where Masjid al Shahada, where that is, at the back of uh, Jabal Ahud, there's a cave where he was injured, and he go there. It's been closed off now. It's like uh, it's fallen to pieces. It's magical. Astaghfirullah. It's not magical. It's not magical, but you know. And after that Ramadan, it re it really helped me, like as a Muslim, who I am now. 1.2 years later, I am who I am now because of these events. Like I've gone to, it's because of a lot of job, but going to Mecca and Medina gave me so much love, and it made me realize how amazing my life is. I will never go back. I receive hatred from all ends. People even say to me, "You're a fake Muslim." You know, most people say Jazakallah khair. I get 99% is good, but sometimes I get triple-ended threats, man, from the Muslims and all this stuff. You know, I love all Muslims, all sects. No matter who they are, they're my brothers. So even the non-Muslims, yeah, they used to call me jihad and all that stuff. But now, mashallah, wallah, adheen. It's the second Ramadan now. We're here in Indonesia and alhamdulillah, I mean, just making it me and Allah Azawajal. I've not been posting much content because I'm learning Quran. I've learned to read Quran. I can slowly read it like a snail. So I can read Quran now. I want to be a Hafiz one day. But like I'm getting tens and twenty thousands of people, yeah, they send me videos, they revert to Islam. My friends, yeah, who are like me, like the, the story I was saying before, that's the sad truth, that's how people in the UK are, you know, the majority, nine out of ten lads will turn out like this. And they've all messaged me that they want to revert to Islam, I can't help them, Allah well, can guide them if they read the book, you know, and have more, I can help them, I can help them, but... In them first moments, I can only just say how Islam's changed my life, it's made me a better person. Before, I wanted to kill myself, you know, and it sounds bad. It sounds bad. It sounds bad. Like, I guess when I was drinking and doing all that stuff, and I was just trying to put myself in an early grave, you know, I was hoping something would happen, you know, bad would happen to me. Like, I didn't care. I didn't care. And my life changed so much. I have happiness, solace. I have direction in life. I have direction in life. I have peace. I have guidance. I'm never alone. I have Allah's well job. I spent a lot of time in, in a room on my own, you know what I mean, before Islam. Just sat there alone. Sat there alone, man. Alone. Very lonely. My life, like, I've got 20 million brothers and sisters. You know, I come to these Muslim countries, what people say about them is lies. Uh, but the propaganda in the West, it's lies. And, you know, it's the most amazing, beautiful places. And 
to have the best quality of life there and the best of friends and the, the best of love these people will want to help you genuinely from the bottom of their heart you know without wanting anything in return and that's Islam and it's also the part the Ummah was a part of the reason what drew me to Islam these amazing people that all my life got told they was a risk all this stuff and it was just completely wrong and I put, submit myself to Allah wellly and truly I'm a Muslim and I'll always be a Muslim and I'll die a Muslim proudly even if something bad happens to me I just want people to know that I found happiness through the Quran it's the Quran it's always been the Quran it's the Quran all these other things hadiths the sex madhabs focus on this after just learn about the Quran learn about the Quran it's always the Quran you know and then just focus on prayer Tawheed the oneness of Allah prayer and the Quran and then maybe when you're ready learn about all the other stuff you know I love all the Sahabas all the companions and I'm still learning to this day and I'm learning about all of Islam you know I learn about all books you know what I mean or I follow the hadiths and you know I'm still new in Islam I'm still a new Muslim but that was my first Ramadan Mashallah was amazing, you know, I met most of the sheikhs, a lot of the sheikhs, Medina, Mecca, they invite me to their homes, big feasts. Mashallah, it was, it was nice, it was nice, it was nice. And I thought, whoa, Mashallah, Saudi, Saudi, Saudi. But now a year's gone down the line, I, I kind of think like, my views have changed and all that, like I won't eat big feasts like this anymore. You know, when there's a lot of miskeen, I, I do charity. So that's another thing, when I first came online, I started to do charity, I never thought I would do anything like this, and I've changed as a person, and I'm happy doing good deeds, and even though I've been forgiven, I try to like influence people to do good things, and, and uh, do charity when we can, and you know, I don't, I'm ashamed of who I was before, but alhamdulillah, I'm so proud of who I am now, and I'm, I am, I say alhamdulillah, praise to Allah, which I'll, you know, when I start to think now, there's, it's not all about big buildings and you know it's not all about big meals and having big meals and putting up you know it's not about that it's just about brotherhood you'll meet the best of people in the miskeen you go to Yemen you go to Afghanistan you go to anywhere without money these people are very humble Pakistan, India these people in Marshall are very humble I've been everywhere we'll talk about them another time but Ramadan was a good year for me last year you know I learned a lot I spent a lot of time with the Miskeen as well, with the Yemenis, and now I surround myself with them and the Syrians. You know, I, Indonesia, Malaysia, my brothers are Yemeni, Syrian, Iraqi, Iraq. I have brothers from all walks of Islam. You know, Sufi, Shia, you know, and I don't judge any of them. I love all of them. There's a lot of um, extremism in all sects. But Al Hakam, Allah is the judge. We cannot say who's Muslim and who's not Muslim. It's something that we do not know, and only Allah Jal knows. And anyone who puts anybody down, who loves the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who believes in Allah Allah Jal and does the five pillars of Islam, these people who say that these other people are not Muslims, you know, may Allah guide them is, may Allah guide them. It's a serious, serious offence to say someone's not a Muslim. And instead of saying Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, if you really care, bro, shut your mouth. Don't say anything in public. And go message them privately. And if you really care, bro, go over there and give them some dawah, bro, if that's how you really feel, brother. See what you have to say about it. You know, there's a lot of hatred. Uh, in uh, The Muslims are not perfect. Most of us are, mashallah, amazing. All I'll say is, just because someone's Muslim, don't trust them. And Allah's wajal will guide you to the right brothers and the wrong brothers. Same with the sisters. You know, be open-minded. You know, don't ever, like, close yourself off from anybody because somebody or some imam or sheikh has told you something. In fact, don't even really listen to them. It's all in the book. Everything you need is in the book. And, you know, I've even unfollowed everyone on Instagram again because I don't want to see anything apart from masjids and I don't want to watch Dawah anymore. You know, I'm done with it. It's only good for motivational and it's turned nowadays into like clickbait and propaganda and all this stuff and it's becoming a mock. But Islam is beautiful, but the Muslims are not perfect. But in these places, Saudi, um, Iraq, you know, Afghanistan, Yemen, Syria, any of the Muslim country, and even in UK, you'll find the best of brothers. 
Egypt, you'll find the best of brothers, the students, knowledge. Anyone who seeks knowledge will have a close relationship with Allah's my child. You know, anyone who's a Muslim and they're not seeking knowledge, bro, and they're not telling you to go to the masjid with them, you know, that's the shaitan. You know, may Allah guide us. Ramadan Mubarak, that's my bit of advice. Yeah, I want to keep it short and sweet. I don't want to talk too much. Ramadan Mubarak, Ramadan Kareem, Jazakum Allah Khairan, Barakallah Fikum, Allah Hayu Shaban. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.